Dear Diary, today I take the next step, the next step in being an ADHD life coach at Indigo Hub. I can't believe it's happening. I want to build, create and discover a place for us to truly be ourselves. I think this journey will be... Shh, the Indigo Diary. Dear Diary, welcome world to the Indigo Diaries and welcome series three, The World Through Our Eyes with your host me, Tasha Hicklin. The Indigo Diaries is a podcast for those who want to learn about ADHD and neurodivergence through others and our own experiences. This week, I've got a very different guest talking about a topic that honestly, I don't really know much about. And that's that's a, that's a first for me. And uh, I, so I've got my notebook ready uh, to take notes because I, I really do love learning from guests. And this is someone who I've connected with quite recently. So I'm really happy to have her here today. And we're going to be starting the conversation when we start a conversation on a topic of interest. And we're going to dive right deep into it. So welcome, Kanan. Thank you, Natasha. Thanks for having me. So let me tell you a bit about her. She's an holistic, neurodiverse coach and relationship whisperer for Aspies Autistics, gifted and twice exceptional adults, their partners and parents. Being 2E herself, she intuitively understands her clients. She specializes in working with highly sensitive and highly intelligent adults who are professionally successful but struggling to experience connection and happiness in their most important relationships, especially the one with themselves. And for a full bio, please look in the description below. So I'm really quite, quite like when, when we first spoke, I was like, oh, twice exceptional. Like, like, so what's, I saw that you said you were 2E. So kind of what's your connection to twice exceptional? Uh, so twice exceptional means that you are um, gifted or you can consider it highly intelligent. So above average IQ. And so that's one exceptionality. So when you also have autism or ADHD, for example, that would be twice exceptional. So you're kind of at um, both ends of this curve. So you may be, you appear extremely intelligent, but you are also actually maybe extremely disabled in some ways, but that may not be visible. Um, So personally for me, I um, identify as gifted and autistic. That's my connection. Okay, so when, when, if you don't mind me asking, I'm gonna prod a bit. When were you Mm -hmm. kind of diagnosed? Um, so I, I've got time blindness, so uh, it would be <laughs> around, I, I think about two and a half to three years ago, I got diagnosed with autism. Um, and then the giftedness thing, I haven't been diagnosed. Um, it's not something I felt I needed. To, it's not really something that I think as an adult, you necessarily go and seek a diagnosis for or um, would even get. Uh, but I kind of inadvertently realised um because I was asked by a lady that runs a podcast for gifted and 2E people to go on as a guest. And at the time, I didn't realise that's what the podcast was. Uh, And so she kind of sought me out. And and then I went into this world of giftedness and reading about it, learning about it. um, And I really identified myself and it it really resonated with me. Um, Added another layer to the the autistic um, identification. Mm. So what are those? I'm, I'm curious, like, because I honestly, I know a lot about obviously autism, but I don't know a lot about the exception. So what are those key things that you really resonated with? Um, so I think with autism, there's a, a level of not feeling quite the same as everyone and, and misunderstood, right? But there was, even with autistic people, sometimes I would have a, I would still have this really large gap of feeling like resonance. But when I spoke to certain people, and I, I guess I realised it was these people who had um, high intelligence. Well, we don't generally go around saying, you know, we're highly intelligent, but the the dialogue may be different. It was a, a different speed. Um, we may cover a, a wide breadth of topics uh, with with quite a lot of knowledge. Um, it's often people who have like done loads of training in loads of different areas, and they kind of just uh, meld it together. So. It's, it's just very wide and deep deep breadth of knowledge and and combining that with the the sort of um autistic aspect for me which was difficulty socializing naturally it was always very effortful um so having having those both aspects when I spoke with someone that was was like me I felt deep mirroring and that's what made it different for me yeah, it's almost like, I know for me when I was diagnosed with ADHD, it's like something, there was still something else going on. Obviously, mine was the yeah. autism, and I suppose it's a bit yeah. like you, there's just something else deeper 
kind of yeah. thing going on here. Yeah, it's it's like another level, another layer, I guess, that you, you kind of unpick. Um, and, you know, the, the thing that I love about learning about giftedness is the whole thing around trauma, because most most people would think, you know, when you're gifted, if you, you kind of maybe think about kids at school, like musicians, that sort of thing, physicists. And it seems quite um, a positive thing. You know, they've got this extreme gift, but actually there's loads of challenges as well that come along with being gifted. And that aspect doesn't usually get talked about. And, and that's what I like helping my people with, because um, I feel like there's there's been this gap that we haven't even recognised and yet it's so significant. So, yeah, that, that's what really um, gets me excited. So you guess what I'm going to ask you? <laughs> Your own question. What are those? Because, yeah, you think gifted, you think, oh, wow, they're highly intelligent. They're, you know, they're getting A's, they can do this, yeah. they can have deep conversations. Yeah. What are the challenges you, you see? Yeah, um, I guess the main one is, uh, again, another layer on top of uh, ADHD or autism is the emotional dysregulation, which is feeling things really, you know, big emotions very deeply. Um, so there's you can have uh, emotional intelligence where you are you know you, you understand emotions and you feel them extremely often often I, I hear kind of um it's like a physical pain like a knife through the heart um and not having someone else who understands that feeling that's really difficult because you can't really it's, it's hard to convey that and I think that's why a lot of uh, artists and writers that's their way of conveying their their deep felt sense of uh, pain, whether it's it's joy or pain, all these you know rainbows of emotions. Um, so that that's one of the things, just giving them the mirroring that yeah, you don't have to even explain it to me. I know exactly what you're talking about, and and that's been really helpful when we find each other. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess the other thing is when you are when your brain thinks quite quickly and likes challenge and complexity you can feel a little bit like you're surrounded by people that can't keep up with you. And so um, I guess, you know, it's almost like a bit like ADHD, I guess you need the stimulation, right? So you're having to try and find it um, in various ways, you know, with hobbies and and reading and learning, that sort of thing. But when you want to try and find it socially, it's a lot tricky because there's less of us, you know, it's a small, mm-hmm. smaller percentage of us. So a lot of us go through the world and life feeling quite isolated and lonely. Um, so it's against that another layer on top of the, the autism or ADHD. Mm-hmm. Also further having this, you know, people can't keep up with me. So I have to suppress that part of myself. I don't because you can make other people feel like they're not, you know, good enough. Yeah. This, this is quite common as well, I find. And it's not intentional. It's just that's just the way your brain works. That's the speed of your brain. And there's uh, it's just about finding people that are on your same wavelength. So I think those yeah. those two really stick out. And then I guess the third one is the, the trauma um, of being in, invalidated, right? The feelings being invalidated, the need for all these different um stimulations I guess you know whether it's uh, spiritual a lot of a lot of us may have existential needs that we want to talk about when we're younger um uh the the relationships that we don't get and I think just the the feeling that um well, let me think how I can word this when even your parents don't understand you right and they they say don't make such a big deal of it don't be so sensitive um don't be so dramatic and you're going through life everyone telling you you know you, you, you're being too much too much this too much that and it, it invalidates what you're experiencing when actually your experience is real so I guess a bit like gaslighting right you've been gaslit yeah. throughout your life that's the other thing so w- when I meet um people like me who are twice exceptional multi-exceptional there's a, re- a sense of relief like yeah, I'm not imagining this. Someone gets it. Mm. Yeah. And, and when you see that trauma, and I and you know, like with the twice exceptional, when you see that trauma being invalidated, what does that do to the kind of the exceptionality of that of those people? What does it do to those people? Um, mm. Well, I guess it's probably a uh, it's wounds that are never quite healed, right? And that 
affects how uh, you behave. So it's like masking, I guess, an, yeah. another level of masking. So when you're constantly not being yourself, um, judging yourself, criticizing, um, a lot of self doubt. But on, on and that's on the inside, I find usually. But on the outside, you may appear like super successful because you're good at what you you you've studied, right, or what yeah. you love, your your interest. So, yeah, it's it's a it's a weird place to be between because mm-hmm. people don't just don't get it. Yeah. Um, I think I've lost track of what your original question no, was. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> because something that's coming up for me is that like it makes people, you know, when people invalidate and people kind of say, you know, be smaller, do this, it kind of creates you to be smaller, to not yeah. reach out as much, to not do this much stuff, to not excel. And then I find that a lot of people that I work with that uh, that are to us actually will get that, oh, you're not quite reaching your potential. Yes, yeah. What Again, that's that? another one. Yeah, I think that's really common. Um, like at school, for mm-hmm. sure. I think a lot of people have said, uh, you know, oh, I remember in my school report it's always said never reaching their not reaching their potential. They have so much more to offer, and it kind of feels like they're saying you're doing it on purpose when you're not. Right? <laughs> that, yeah. And you, you go through life like that. It's not that you don't want to. So I think that it's even worse when you know you probably do know and other people can see your potential and it's doubly frustrating because actually the the level of performance I guess is that makes the gap even bigger Mm. so that's even more uh, painful to see in a way yeah especially when you're like I have kids that are like you know they're in class and they're bored because the, the stuff that they're learning about is they're way higher and yeah. and it's but then because they're not learning, then they start getting, especially if they've got ADHD or autism, start getting, you know, fidgety, distracted and all that. And then people think that you you don't know it when actually it's usually around the board and be smaller. And that can put a lot of your potential and make yourself feel a lot smaller. Mm. I think um I don't know if I'm going off on a tangent here, no, but um what I've noticed, even like in my my personal life, and from from the people I work with, you kind of get go through school doing pretty well, like really well, and you're not having to put much effort in. And then what happens is you get to the point where um, you have to become a little bit more independent with your, your study and your self discipline. And because you've you've survived quite easily and not making the effort and having to learn study skills, that kind of thing. You drop off a cliff and that that bits really affects people's self-confidence mm. and it's it means they've got like a big steep learning curve to try and um figure out how do I get myself organized how do I get myself disciplined because I've never had to do it and whereas other kids are probably you know they've had to do that at an earlier stage with less pressure uh, less challenging things so it's it's like you need to really be preparing earlier but because you don't you don't actually need to academically so you don't and then you have this huge drop and I think that this is the thing that is, is very um confusing and uh and, and difficult to just climb back again from that place yeah but we uh, what I've seen is we do it because we have so much perseverance and determination and maybe even that hyper focus kicking in there yeah and I, and I see that, especially with university students. So they go to school and then their, their, their exam grades are like A's. And then sometimes their teacher's comments are very different to the A's because they're just, they're just going into class. They're not really paying attention. They, they leave, yeah. you know, they get to, and then they get to uni and it's like they've got all this other stuff to do. You've got essays. It's not always exams. You've got to have it in here, in here. And then it's like, I, I can't, I, how do I do that? Because yeah. I've just kind of, got by because my yeah. you know the intelligence was and the knowledge was enough yeah and when you is that what you're kind of speaking about and then when you get to yeah that, you I mean I, I could give you my personal experience which was like I was a, a grade a student at GCSE right then um as I went to, when I went to university I found it so hard because I basically I think what I basically went to university for mainly was to learn social skills so all my academic ability dropped off a cliff. I, I did okay. Like I came out with a I think two two, 
but I'm sure people would have thought I'd have done better given my past academic experience uh, mm -hmm. results. Um, and I, I didn't really understand what was going on back then, mm -hmm. right? I, I was like, oh, maybe I, I just picked the wrong course or whatever, you know, got distracted by fun things, <laughs> I don't know. But uh, yeah, looking back, I'm like, well, clearly I invested most of my time and energy into learning how to be with other people, um, you know, just observing, interacting and putting it into practice. So, uh, you know, I, I don't regret it, but it explains things to me now. Yeah. yeah. What like if if you I'm, I'm going to pull pub at this, but like what, what do you think when you were at uni made made you kind of do that and made you kind of go off the cliff with the other stuff? Um, I guess I, I because there was more people there, you meet a different crowd and uh, and then there's more of a chance of meeting people who are like minded. I think at school you're kind of limited to mm. whoever's you know whoever's there, and then as you as you grow up, there's there's a wider wider pool of people to meet. And I just you know that's where I met my husband. He's definitely neurodivergent, so I, I'll probably blame most of it on him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think you know he he I, le I learned a lot of social um skills from him definitely um so it, this is why I say you know I don't I don't have any regrets uh I definitely I learned a lot and it, I think of it like the school of life rather than learning I, I was studying management and marketing of textiles and that just wasn't as interesting <laughs> clearly yeah but that, I think that's a really good point what you made there, the school of life. You might have to copyright that, but like the okay. school of life, because that I feel that that's a missing key here. Because like you yeah. said there, that they're, they're, they're getting through, you know, especially if you've got parents that are very supportive that will kind of say, oh, your homework needs to be in there. They'll just scrape it in, get it in last minute, do all this stuff. And then when you get uni or job, it's like, oh, what about all these life skills? Mm. Or what about all the things, like you said, getting organised and all those things that before you could just turn up, do the exam, leave? Yeah. You kind of like, I think, you know, the, when you're young, you can wing it a lot easier, right? Yeah. And that's that's what we were, a lot. Of, I think a lot of people do leave it kind of, unless you have to, you're not yeah. going to make the, especially like teenagers, right? So it's understandable. I don't know if you know when I parent I try and parent taking into account all these things so that I can hopefully prepare my children but the reality is I can't force them I can only offer invite um so whether, whether it would have made a massive amount of difference back then if I'd had it but I'm sure it would have helped yeah, um, yeah. but sometimes you have to you have to experience the the things going wrong to feel the motivation to do it differently don't you so I think yeah. that's, you know, it, it, that's how it worked out for me. I was like, I was probably quite surprised at my um, result at uni, but you know, it was, it's fine. I, um, I do believe that I'm, I'm someone who prefers probably self-educating, learning my style, my way. And I found university quite probably a bit, the way it was taught, a bit boring. And that's probably why I didn't take it in as well as I could have yeah and which that, I think I'm <laughs> it's probably quite common <laughs> yeah and that's what I was actually going to ask you next so we're going to take a break and then we're going to come back and we're going to go into this kind of what happens if people that are, that are too e kind of have that learn environment that works for them what happens and we're out If you would like any more information on Indigo Hub or our Indigo support group, then please check out our website below or our link to our social media platforms or email at indigohub.adhd at gmail.com. If you would like to offer any comments, feedback, get support, or if you're interested in the world hearing your story, then please reach out through any of our avenues. As said before, have a positive week. Check in again later. And we're out. And we're back. And um, we press record as quick as possible because we'll start we'll start <laughs> talking in bit. So if you didn't join us before, we're joined by Kaden and she will be talking about 2E, uh, twice exceptional.
and we were just getting into like the nitty gritty and then I cut us off so I'm going to bring us back and we were talking about kind of what it's like when you when people that are that do have that are twice exceptional are kind of constrained to the environments where it is you've got to learn like this and you were saying that when you when you started to learn in your own way after university like what difference did that make learning in the way that you need it was um just freedom to like dive deep into the areas that interest you so it's kind of like the let, let the natural curiosity drive your learning as opposed mm-hmm. to someone else dictating what you need to learn um it, it's just so much easier but you know i i have varying interests so um at the moment I'm, I'm learning about giftedness right and so we we get given a uh a set of like a how do you call it you know set of modules and different readings now my, my concern was I'm not very good at reading I can't really focus and read anymore I, I'm really into audiobooks and so my, my worry was like oh gosh I'm gonna have to read all this stuff I don't know if I can do it I was really really worried and she gave me, you know, because she understands that we think different. Um, she said, I'm sure you'll find your own way to learn the material. So I, I just, um, you know, whether it's audio books, whether it's YouTube, um, it, it's all applicable. Like you, you can, even if I Google it and read something, that gives me more engagement than just reading a book, if that makes sense. Yeah. It means I have, I, I can do, I can change it up when I want. I can shift topics when I want. So that I think having the freedom allows you to kind of manage your own um, motivation and engagement. Mm. And and when you're at school, you can't really do that because there's a set curriculum and you have to go at a set pace. And that can be really frustrating. And I know a lot of a lot of kids, uh, neurodivision or not, I just always hear them say, school's so boring. Why are we learning stuff that like, we're never going to use? And I think they can't, you know, they, they kind of tell them the truth really. Um, because when you come out, the world's very different now, isn't it? They, they yeah. you know, even if you think about chat GPT, I'm pretty sure they're going to need to learn more about that and where that's going to take the world than maybe, uh, I don't know, like theorems that they're never going to apply. You know, yeah. no, I'm not yeah. saying no one would use those things, but I mean, the, there's not enough diversity of um, yeah. ways of learning, I think. And, and I understand, you know, the school system is set up a certain way. The, the teachers are limited, funding's limited, et cetera, et cetera. But I feel like it's so out of date and it needs a real shake-up to um, get catch up with, you know, the world today and, and for our kids. So that they, I think they want to learn, but they kind of go to YouTube and various forums, like, you know, to learn yeah. things. And it doesn't have to be that way, I just think. Yeah. And like you said there, when you when that teacher said to you, on your course you know do it in a different way then you went on to get you found your way of doing it yeah which means that you took in more versus this yeah I can't learn I'm not going to do it anymore yeah it's it's not even I'm not going to but I, I feel I would think I can't do it and yeah. I wouldn't even have bothered trying because I would it would have stopped me before it even got going mm-hmm. so just having having someone giving you the okay that it, it you don't have to learn it the specific way as long as you learn about the material yeah. somehow that could have that could be talking to a person right like there's so many ways yeah there's absolutely so many ways so like and and I and I'm I'm a big believer I think I've said this before like I didn't read an academic book until last year when I stopped wow. reading I started right. listening right because uh-huh. listening it for me that's what works I can go on a run I can go on a walk and listen to my yeah. book and I'm focused yeah. I'm there I'm content but if, yeah. if you want me to sit down and read, there's absolutely no way. But it's yeah. just we're not given this choice. Like, what sort of ways do you feel work best for Twice Exceptional? Well, I think everyone, you know, again, it's like everyone's unique. And yeah. so you kind of have to check in with the person. What uh, if, if they get given options, I think they can figure it out themselves. Because it, I, I really believe, like, well, the, the common thread with giftedness is a natural curiosity like like a, a desire for lifelong okay. learning so as long as that's allowed to mm. uh, run free I think we just figure it out on our own right it's maybe we're just trying to control it too much you know I like that we just we just it they, they'll just know 
We do, we do know. Honestly, I, I believe this. I think we we have it inside all of us, but then the outside world constricts our path. And that's where I feel the problem is. Yeah. And and a lot of us, we, you know, we we persevere, we're we're able to get through it, but it means that we're not living a um an easeful life, you know, a, maybe a fulfilling life. Mm-hmm. And that really upsets me. I don't think that's fair. I know the world's not fair, but you know, as we talk about these things, hopefully it'll open more people's eyes up and they'll be more open to these um, different ways of, of teaching and learning. Um, so yeah, it's just about can we have a few more options that you know, <laughs> so restricted. Yeah. yeah, and that's what it is like. It's just options because yeah. what I find when I ask people like clients, what do you need? They like, uh, I have no idea. Because they've never been given options. So if you've never yeah. been given options, you think that it's one way, sit down, be quiet, read. Yeah. And then you start going, I can't do it. I can't. And then you start being smaller, 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 smaller. Yeah. And, but actually you can do it. You just need a different way of doing it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So what what would you find, like, especially when it gets to kind of getting older and and, and getting into kind of, you know, after getting into work and stuff like that, what sort of things do you find that kind of happens with twice exceptionals? Oh, gosh, I think it's that adulting thing that becomes more apparently, um, like, difficult. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, I guess becoming a parent is when it was most apparent to me, having to cook more more different meals, accommodate more different diets because we've got various allergies in our family. Um, And then the level, I know it sounds a bit crazy, but I think it probably resonates with some people because we like, we're okay maybe learning about our subject, but um, our favorite subjects. But when it comes to doing the chores that don't come naturally and have no engagement whatsoever. And yeah, that, that bit is the bit that has been most challenging actually. And then to think, it, it's weird because you kind of think that should be easy you know that they're the basics why can't I do that <laughs> that seems it doesn't seem to make sense but really I think that's where it is um the, the challenges in the kind of um very boring daily admin tasks uh, I know some people like cooking I I love eating I don't like cooking so for me, you know, that, that's the problem. I'm, I'm on that with you. On that. I don't like cooking. I don't like cleaning. I like the in-between bit of eating it. That's it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, the dopamine bit, you know. <laughs> yeah. The bit that's pleasurable. Yeah. But we find, we find ways around it, you know, um, whether it's it's conventional or not. Uh, I think that that's something I've had to do, you know, like change perception of what, what is acceptable and what is not acceptable um even I guess you know we have a cleaner now and she's amazing right but but before I had the cleaner I was that was like my special interest when I wasn't working I was like my house must be spick and span and perfect so I spent literally every second looking for you know looking for something that was out of place and and hoovering up that sort of thing um so it was really tricky to change my perception of it's okay not to do it yourself it, it there's definitely like mm. a cultural thing in there as well um but my, my husband's Indian and I, actually in India they all have chefs and cleaners so I think that that helped you know yeah that yeah it's okay it's okay and yeah I've got very I've got extremely comfortable with that concept now whereas mm. I think yeah if I think back to earlier days no I I would maybe think I was being lazy if I wasn't doing all these things myself because I can do it. So why am I not doing it? Yeah. But it's that thing of when it comes to like excelling in your favorite topic or favorite subject or work or things like that, you excel. And then this like cleaning and the boring stuff, you don't. And then it's that thing of people like, Oh, you know, why can't you just do it? Oh, you must be this, that, why can't you just that's yeah. Or you're lazy. And then like that, what perception do you find that that has on people? are twice exceptional oh well I guess well I can talk if I talk about from the inner experience you, you have a very high expectation of yourself um to do everything kind of <laughs> it's it's like we're cooking okay 
it needs to be healthy, it needs to be organic, it needs to be cooked from scratch, you know. So you add all these like expectations on yourself, um, which obviously you can do, you know, I definitely did try and do, but it's just exhausting. You know? yeah. So um, uh, I've lost track of your question. <laughs> <laughs> I went into the feeling of what that was like. And I lost track of your question. That was the question. What, what's it, what's it like, that, that, that kind of experience? Yeah, it's it's almost like unnecessarily pressurized mm. because you. I think you want to experience at a certain level, and so you kind of push yourself to try and achieve that level, even if it's it's kind of sacrificing something you you shouldn't. Uh, and it's seeing that you know making choices. Um, where is it okay to lower your standards, mm. and maybe where is it? great to have those high standards and that's often where it is in in your line of work and where your passion lies because yeah. you don't have to you don't actually have to work as hard it, it kind of feeds back you know like my work feeds back to me it nourishes me so it makes more sense actually to put those high standards into that area than the food where you know, maybe I could get a really uh, nice meal from somewhere which have a great chef you know that yeah, that makes yeah. it easier you know yeah. And that, I, I think that perfectionism is a real big thing because when you, you know, when you've got that high intent, you, 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 you get, when you put your heart in things into the things that you're interested in, you do get high standards. So mm-hmm. then you expect that from all the other areas of your life. Yeah. And I know like for me, I would, I, when I was a teacher, I would go to work and I would do so well. I'd come home and it'd be like, oh, right, you need to cut up the veg. And I'm, I've got this so I really struggle cutting up veg. So I'd be there like hours, like cutting it up really small for everyone. And then like making a lasagna from scratch and then making sure I've got a side and a drink and set the table. And now I just buy those packets of cut up veg. Yeah, it costs a bit more. Yes. <laughs> yeah. but it stops that. Or, or just, you know, get those ones where you just chuck it all in a bowl. It's healthy, but yeah. it's just those those things where you've just you've not got to do it all to the yeah. perfect all the time because that's not exactly. sustainable yeah it's, it's putting it, putting your energy directing your energy in the right place and, and like this is something that i learned from yoga you know you you only have so much energy so direct it very carefully and intentionally mm-hmm. um and it is very logical when when you break it down like that but i think we're so busy with life and the the expectations based on what we see that we don't really stop and think of it necessarily mm-hmm. You know, and, and it's only when you have make time for yourself to, to stop and you know in, in coaching that's what we do isn't it we're kind of like evaluating yeah. is it actually working what do we need to change um and we don't often get that opportunity when we're busy we're always busy trying to achieve what we're trying to achieve yeah. that, that's the trouble isn't it yeah and it, it's and that then, thing of, of making yourself bigger like we stop yeah. trying to make us small and make yourself bigger and put the energy into things that give you that energy yeah yeah and and I was just thinking you know that the big thing that I do is about relationships you know that's that's mm-hmm. ultimately what I want for people is to have a good relationship with themselves and and the people in their lives and when we put in that perfectionism it can be deadly you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> really ruin relationships because we all well and good having well we have these expectations of ourselves but then we end up having it uh, for other people that we mm-hmm. that we love and we don't even realise it. And that, I think that's the trouble. We don't see it for what it is. You know? So, so that, 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 that's the bit that I try and help people see is that, you know what, you, you can, it's safe to relax. Yeah. Everything will actually be okay. Yeah. But we're so used to it. Kind of like, right, I'm going to guide you there. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Especially when your mind thinks so fast. Mm. It, it, it is hard to and, and then people think that relaxing is like you know lying in bed like it doesn't have to be lying in yeah, bed I sell no. it to people it doesn't have to be like what I'm curious about the relationships like what do you find is kind of you talked about relationship with the self and the kind of the way we look at ourselves through the trauma makes us smaller but what do you find is quite challenging with people with in in relationships Oh, just the misunderstanding, I think, misunderstandings, because um, often there's a lot of intensity, whether it's external intensity or intensity inside yourself that you're holding back. 
you know that when other people when people have been telling you like too much so you you, you get used to holding it all in and then what happens inevitably is it explodes <laughs> you know that re- it looks like reactivity I guess we you know you see it in in kids definitely you know after school explosive because they just need to release but it also happens with adults right with all the emotions and unsaid unsaid uh, words unmet needs and it just explodes out and, it, and it's really messy you know um, and it, it's not it it doesn't um, honour what's really going on for the individual um so they, they kind of have an uh they need sort of a, a way a space to kind of just breathe and and listen to each other's sides of the story so it's about seeing different perspectives and um, but when you're like desperate for the other person to understand you it's almost like a battle and you're both trying to you know be heard so that, then that leads to the conflict and, and more misunderstanding and distancing uh, when actually that that's not what they want, but they don't know another way to get out of it because you, you're only taught, you know, do what you do, but do it harder. Yeah. <laughs> try, try, just try hard to do what you, you always have done and, and it doesn't work. So, yeah. yeah. And that intensity is, is quite hard because especially for other people as well that aren't, perception or neurodivergent it it can be hard because we we are very intense people because we are so passionate and all that and and it can be quite hard if you don't understand because it's like you know let's say I don't know I you know I I had a a kind of blowout last week and it was like I've had enough yeah I've done and then people like what like it was just this and it's like it's not just that like it's like it's (laughs) not just that there's so much and especially when your mind is thinking so much faster about so mm. you're so many steps ahead, so many steps here. Yeah. It can be quite a a lot in the mind. Yeah. So I, I often think of it like um it's like clutter, right? A, an accumulation of uh, negative thoughts and misperceptions. Mm. And it's never been got rid of. So yeah, I I, I did I used to do well. Uh, decluttering and organizing right so going into people's houses to help oh, them cool. get rid of physical clutter but it's no different relationships like all, all the negative thoughts and beliefs that have accumulated over the years just lead to resentment and anger and and that needs to be let out somewhere so you know creating the space uh, it's it's no I don't really see it as any different to like clearing a house it's like the house of your your heart or the house of your mind you still have to clear it out. There's there's a lot of rubbish there that shouldn't be there. You know, it's yeah. it's in the past. It's done and dusted. You don't need it anymore. I love that. It's like internal clutter. It is. There's yeah. loads of it. <laughs> it's like the invisible clutter, like of a relationship or the emotional. It's there and it's just got to go. And yeah. that can be a lot for someone to be themselves and to really show who they are when there there is that much from the past from thing it and all that stuff yeah and that's you know it, it's and it's not stuff you can it's not easy it's not no. visible um and, and like in yoga we talk about the different layers of being so that it's kind of like you, you're not aware of all the the more subtle layers which is the, the energetic layers um you know the the wisdom layers uh and that's what i love it's like People can see that the, they get the physical stuff, the, the what we call like the gross body, the physical body. But there's all these subtle things that are actually having a massive impact on your whole well-being. So it's important not to just kind of um, deal with it with like kind of um, meds, let's say, because that does just deal with the physical body. You need to work on your own energies, your own thoughts all that stuff you know I'm sure you you know what I mean um but it's it's not easy because we're not we don't go through school being help that space is not help for this is it really (laughs) so that that's why and and a lot I would say a lot of um parents of 2e um they themselves struggle through life not having and that's why they couldn't give it to their children right so I consider myself very lucky that um I had space in my childhood uh like I, I grew up with one parent from age eight and although that I think at the time that probably seemed awful you know and I would have been oh sad that like, why why me why do I not have 
two parents, mm. you know. Um, but actually looking back, having that space and not having um, kind of, uh, not sure what the right word I'm looking for. It's not inappropriate, but um, it's almost like the, the phrase is, it's better to walk alone than with people who, who don't support you. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so it's almost like I didn't get too much negative effect from um, parenting, uh, being parented as a child, because I have one less parent. So that that's a gift in a way. Um, yeah. But some people get, so when I talk about trauma, like they, they could have been kind of neglect, their emotional needs are often neglected mm-hmm. or taken advantage of, their, their intelligence would have been taken advantage of because they, they appear very wise and mature. Mm-hmm. And then they take on roles that they they shouldn't have because at the end of the day, still a child, you know, but it's not the parents' fault. So that's why I consider myself lucky that um, looking back, you know, everything happened for a reason. And this is why I, I feel it's important to give other people this experience. So when I work with them, you know, I, I do bring a bit of that, that mother love in. That it, I think it's important. I love like, it. I love yeah. it. I, I'll, I will not deny that, you know, <laughs> I, I'm a hugger, you know, definitely put, bring a lot. I think the whole basis of what I do is about love and um, just bringing more love, peace and harmony to the world. So, yeah, might, might sound a bit hippie-ish, but that's no, I, I think, think that's I, what we need more of. <laughs> yeah, because like like if we if we think back to everyone, you know, I would say every person that's ever annoyed divergent when they were a kid. But if we are brought up in that house that gets us that lets us have that space let's just do that what difference that can make I mean I, I bet we both see it right what difference that makes and this constraint you've got to do it like this you've got to do it like this you've got to, on the person the people around them when you give them that space of understanding and how far yeah you get to your potential and further mm. it's a huge huge it's it changes the trajectory I think that's mm. That's the reality. Like it might not seem massive at the time, mm. but I, I see it as it makes the difference between really good mental health and really bad mental health. Yeah. That's you know, other, otherwise I probably wouldn't wouldn't be doing what I do because I wouldn't be needed. Right? Yeah. Yeah, we both That's wouldn't be think. out of a yeah. job. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, we're fighting against convention, aren't we? And, and yeah. the, the neurotypical um constraints of society and that's that's why we, we must I feel like we must um educate people and, and my favorite thing is to educate parents because I know they're not they, they just want their kids to be happy and to do well mm. in life and you know they they may think that the only way they can do that is to make their kid conform to yeah. that school path where, and I want them to know that no that's not the only way you, you can do it differently because oh. Actually, maybe a child thinks differently. Yeah, options. <laughs> options. options. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And it's that thing of, of when you've got that twice exceptional mind that thinks fast and all that, then let it go. Let it be yeah. curious. Don't make it smaller. Let it be curious. Let it grow and let it be and do what it needs to do. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. I think that you know that this is where innovations happen, isn't it? Yeah. If you allow it to to run its course. Mm. it's needed yeah and it's exciting Mm. okay so that kind of brings us to a quite a nice positive end (laughs) without (laughs) knowing about it we've always done this so any last words okay um i think i'm just gonna i'm gonna say something short which is uh i want i want people to remember about the magic of life and being alive so and a really beautiful phrase that I I often look at, I've got a print out of, is I look with wonder at that which is before me. So it's just not knowing what's going to be, but having this sense of wonder. It, there's infinite possibilities. It's not it's not just this like constricted, limited path for me. Mm. I love that. Yeah, look in wonder. Yeah, be curious, be yeah. go outside the lines. Love it. Yeah. So where can everyone find you? Uh, they can find me on my website, uh, which is aspicoach.com. Um, I'm on 
LinkedIn, uh, under my full name. Uh, I'm on Facebook as Asti Coach. Um, so, yeah, that, I think they'll be able to find me somewhere on there. <laughs> and I'll put all the links in below as always. Awesome. Because I don't know about you, but sometimes when people go, ah, oh, I hear a podcast, like, where can I find? I'm like trying to write it down. Then I'm like, oh, no, I've got to go back. And then someone just comes yeah. me. Then, yeah, no. Yeah. Well, it's been great to speak to you. Um, and I've made a lot of notes that I'm seriously going to take away from this. So thank you. Oh, awesome. Thanks for having me. It's been great chatting. Good. So in two weeks, we'll be dropping a new episode. Um, and we've got some more guests. So I'm very excited. Uh, it's been a good year for 2023 with guests. So if you're interested in coming on a guest, you want to pick our brains, or you want to share your story in series one, then please reach out through our social media avenues. Come, learn, listen, and and experience the world through not my eyes, but our eyes. Why not? Be curious. Let wonder. And we're out. Dear Diary, as Indigo Hub's process goes on, it makes me stop and wonder. Could there be more for us? More light, more experience, and more ways to see the world through our own eyes. I think this journey will be...